welcome back to another vid. As you can see, we have an Amiga 1000. And what am I doing with it? Well, I'm just experimenting at the moment. Um, I've got an Aronet CPU relocator and a ROM adapter in there. We've had to do a couple of little modifications to the board, but nothing too serious. Let me lift this off. Now, as you can see, I have a, a strained wire there coming off of US4, which I'll change for a longer wire in a moment. Didn't realize it was quite so tight. Uh, and on U3J, we have a resistor over one and pin 20. Uh, yeah, so I need to change the resistor to make it neat if it works. I don't like the fact that the cable is trying to lift this thing out, but it's all the right way around. The CPU socket, or the CPU rather, has a notch at that end. The kickstart is a 1.3, I think, from 88. Might put a 1.2 in it, but 1.3 will do for the moment. 1.2 would be, what would that be, 987, I think. 86, 87. Anyway, um, and that goes into the 68000 socket on the board. Uh, it tells you what to do. If you flip the board over, there are some brief instructions. There are instructions for the A1000 with the daughter board, which is the American model. And there are instructions for the PAL version, which has no daughter board. And on the ROM uh, are there, so it doesn't have... Uh, doesn't have the extra ROM board that the American one has. So, plugged in a screen, we're going to turn it on. Once I move things out of the way so it don't short out, I don't think there's anything kicking about. So we're going to power up. That bleep there comes from... That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, the bleep comes from the speaker that's on there, which I think you can see. Uh, and what that does, it allows you to have ROMs that you can switch between. But I'm not particularly interested in that, if I'm honest. The A1000 should be left as is. Although I do find putting the kickstart discs in a bit of a pain in the butt. So there we go, that's 1.3. So let's see if we can let's find a disc. What do we got? Disc B, it's not very helpful. Disc 2. Also not very helpful. Cleaning desk. Pac-Man. Pac-Man might have to do. There we go. 512K. Which is what this is. You've got 256 on board. 256 run pack there. Pac-Mania. I did have this back in the day actually, Pac-Mania. Fantastic. Deeply impressed. What's that? Oh, that's the... Um, that's that thing. So there we go, Pac-Mania. I suppose there should be some volume, but I don't know how to work it. I don't have the keyboard connected. Hopefully it'll run a demo. So that's it. It's a quite... It's a simple... Um, uh, I'm just looking at a message. It's a simple fit. It's just the Aronet. Um, you need a kickstart. The 68000 comes from your board. You've got a jump wire going across and a resistor on whatever that is, U3J. Don't know what it does, but there you go. So I'm going to cut that back, fit it properly, put a slightly longer cable on and try and neaten the wires up a bit. The floppy is a bit of a the floppy cable is a bit of a pain in the butt, but but uh, I don't care, to be honest. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so there we go. So I'm going to tidy this up, and we'll do another video in just a second. Okay, we've done a little bit more work. Uh, put this jump wire on now, which is the longer jump wire. That goes on there, somehow, there we go, 
that's on U4S. Um, now I think I must have put a um, kickstart switch on here before some years ago, but I don't know what happened to it. I think I borrowed one, I seem to remember. So I had to change the jumpers there to all to the, wasn't the weight states, what's it for? I think it's the RAM configure. I don't know, I can't remember now. Um, but I've written standard on there, and so I've, I've just put that on there and it won't boot. So put it back as it was. And now it does boot, so that's fine. Um, you probably can't see it, but I've put the resistor, cut it right down and soldered it on. Um, I've also flattened the floppy cable out, taken the creases out of it, put it back. So it now sits flat on the board. And now this sits flat. That's the A1000 wobbling. So that's nice and tight in the socket now. So I'm going to put the floppy in, screw it on, and we'll give it a go. So we've got the floppy screwed back in. Uh, the Aronet adapter is fitted nicely. The resistors soldered nicely. Cables fairly neat. Uh, let's give it a power up. Good so far. Angels. One of my favourite games on the Amiga. Oh, red screen. I wasn't expecting that. Let's try another disc. Sure, what a red screen means. Oof. Oh, I love discs. 30 years old. Done by IG, whatever the hell IG is. Right, and there we pack my hand. We're running uh, a little bit low on discs. Nineteen eighty eight Namco exclusively for Australia and Europe. Wonder why? I've got a joystick plugged in or a keyboard, so don't think I can play it with a mouse, but you never know. So anyway, there we go. That's my Amiga one thousand. needs a bit of uh, retro brighting. So I'm going to bolt this back up together, set the screen on top as it should be. I'm not quite sure where the keyboard is. I think I know where it is, but I'll have to have a little look. I can jump, but I can't move. I'm gonna get eaten. Looks quite good, doesn't it? Anyway, we'll put the case on, bolt it back together, and we'll have a little play. So there we go, that's the MIG 1000 back together. Looking a little yellow and uh, weather beaten, but uh, it's 30 years old, what do you expect? I'll give it a clean up. Could do with the front cover for the 
1085 if anybody's got one. It looks more yellow on camera than it does in real life. But never mind. So there we go. Playing RVF Honda. I think my brother had an RVF back in the eighties. Okay, thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>